welcome to you. I'm Hayley Farmer. It's so good to have you here with me on tonight's show, especially as we have a great guest for you. Yes, it's actress, TV presenter, singer and dancer, Claire Sweeney. And here is what happened when I caught up with her. Claire, it's great to have you on the show. How are you? I'm good, Hayley. I hope you're well. I am. I'm dead chuffed you're here today. I wrote to you and I thought, fingers crossed, I can get Claire Sweeney on the show. And I'll Aww. tell you why, because I'm obsessed with your Instagram, uh, with Fat Tony. <laughs> I literally, I'm living for that. I can relate to practically everything you're saying on there, Claire. Oh, it's hilarious. Thank you. Thank you so much. He's, he's a bit of a he's a bit of a tinker. Sometimes I don't know he's filming me. And then, I, and then it really catches me, you know, every morning when I've got no makeup on, I've just done the school <laughs> run. <laughs> so, Honestly, yeah. I need more. I, I need a little dose of that every day. It's just brilliant. Um, <laughs> so thank you for that. Thank you for giving me thank life you. in these winter mornings. Um, but we're going to go uh, into your first song choice, Claire. I can't take my eyes off you. Frankie Valley, what a song to kick off with. Why this one? It is, isn't it? So, you know, I'd heard this song. I, you know, I used to sing on clubs when I was a teenager, all the social clubs. And it was like a stable song in most male singers' repertoire. Um, so I've just heard the song for years, you know. And I didn't really know much about Frankie Valley. And then I saw Jersey Boys, the musical. Oh, isn't it and wonderful? It was, oh, well, it was one of those shows. And I thought, oh, my God, I didn't realise that was their song. That was their song. Yeah. And then when this song came on with the trumpeter just walking across the scaffold and at the top of the stage, oh. It was, I was just, I was just elevated, you know, it was, it was wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Filled, fills me with joy, that show and this song. Oh, me too. Yeah, it's a and, classic, and isn't it? Sorry, Hayley, it's also my favourite, my song with my boy. It's our little song that we sing oh, together. Is it? Yeah, oh. yeah. <sighs> Love yeah, we that. sing it together. Love it. Well, this one is going out uh, to your son. Here it is, uh, Frankie Valley. Can't take my eyes off you. Enjoy, and I'll be catching up with Claire after this. <laughs> Claire, we've got some questions from some of our lovely viewers. Uh, Pam would like to know, what's the funniest thing that's ever happened on stage that you can tell us on a family show? Yeah, <laughs> I was doing Guys and Dolls in the West End. Um, I had to open Act Two with a strip. I used to strip down to my knickers, singing Take oh, Back right. Your yeah, okay. Take Back Your Mink, but it was all strategically done with a mink <laughs> style. And the songs are Take Back Your Mink, Take Back Your Pearls, right? And your sweet, the dress dropped to the floor, the gloves come off, <laughs> the mink's there, and the last thing to come off is like the pearls, right? So my pearls come off, bounced on the floor, broke and scattered everywhere. And the girls no. had about another five or six bars to dance while they were all falling over. And we're meant to be strategically <laughs> covering our bare breasts on stage with the mink still while they were, we're all flat on the floor with our backs out, you know, so that was, that was no. the opening of Act Two, yeah. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Entertainment. Everyone got their money's worth yeah. that night watching that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Lee says, uh, if you weren't in entertainment, uh, what would you do for a job? Makeup artist, special effects. I wrote, oh. When I was in Brookside, I was always getting beaten, battered and whatever. And I used to sometimes do my own bruises and cuts and sores. Oh, I really wow. enjoyed Yeah, I yeah, loved it. Loved it. Yeah, that's really good because I'm sort of rubbish at art. At school, I sort of failed it, so I don't think I'd be yeah. very good. But that is oh. quite a skill, isn't it? Well, yeah, I got the girls to teach me. So these days, oh, Claire's been beaten up again. Lindsay's been beaten up again. Oh, this is the set, Claire. You make a start. <laughs> I used to love it. Oh, uh, yeah. Love that. Well, we're going to go into your uh, next song choice. Oh, yes. What an absolute favourite. Marvin Gaye, what's going on? Why this song? I mean, this song, I listen to this song. I've listened to this song for 35 years now and I just this album is a brilliant album but the lyrics are so poignant especially during lockdown and what's going on yeah. in the world you listen to these lyrics now and they could be written today and they would yeah. still mean so much and be so poignant yeah yeah it's a wonderful song uh, we're gonna play yeah. that out now and uh, we can't wait to see you after I just want to ask a question who really cares? I want to rewind how everything started, Claire, because am I right in saying that you used to do disco dancing? That's what I used to do. Oh. Back in the day. Yeah, I started out. Well, I, I, 
I was a shy child. Were you? And I was obsessed with the TV. Yeah. And I was obsessed with the TV show Fame. Oh, yeah. With the leg warmers and, yeah. And uh, I remember um, there was a dance school opposite my house called the Irene Crilly School of Dance. And I used to watch the kids queuing up. And I thought, oh, I'd love to have the courage to do that, you know. And one day I, I did and I joined the class and I started off a nervous little kid at the back and I ended up at the front, you know, quite confident. Oh, and then I, I ended it. up like becoming yeah. the Northwest Disco Dancing Champion. I used to love it, yeah. Did you? Did you yeah, used to do the comps yeah, every yeah, Sunday? Yeah. yeah, that was it. <laughs> the massive trophies when I you know, won, they I were mean, great, we weren't they? I used to crimp my hair and spray it pink. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And backcomb it with big yeah, earrings and everything. It. Yeah, that's taking me back. The photos are horrific actually, the ones that my mum's got of me. Nobody's to ever see them. Well, do you know what? Well, you're lucky because we haven't got any pictures. My mum never took a picture of me and my disco dancing outfits, which is such a shame. <laughs> you're very, very lucky. <laughs> but you went on to uh, Italia Conte, didn't you? Well, between that, I started singing in social clubs, as I was saying earlier. And so at the age of 14 to like 17, I went to a stage school in Liverpool and I used to sing in, in the clubs. I used to go on before the bingo and after the butties. And it was a real, it was like Love Phoenix it. Nights type clubs. And it was a real baptism of fire. It, it was great wow. experience. Yeah, and then I went to Conti's when I was 17. Yeah, how was that? It was great. It was great. You know, just thinking then, Hayley, I remember my very first introduction uh, to the clubs, I was 14 years of age, and uh, yeah. it was the first time singing on, on, a, on a club, and I was wearing a bridesmaid's dress from my auntie's wedding, oh. and the, 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 the concert secretary came out, and he said, uh, ladies and gentlemen, give the girl a chance now, she's only 14, <sighs> please welcome to oh, the Claire. stage, and, uh, Claire Jane Sweeney, by the way, the bingo tickets and butties have been served at the back of the room, and everyone got up and ran to the back of the room. No. And that, that was, yeah, that was my first entrance on stage. Oh, Claire. So, I know, How I know. far you've come since then. And uh, oh. I mean, I love your journey because I love, you got into acting, didn't you? But, I mean, how did that all come about? I kind of fell into acting. Um, Brookside, I mean, I was a massive Brookside fan. And there was an audition. They wanted a singer in Mike Dixon's band. And I couldn't make that audition. So my agent at the time said, oh, there's another audition. Go along for that. You're not right for the part. They want a little scally, a rough and ready girl uh, to play Jimmy Corkill's daughter. Go for that. And ask them, will they consider you for the other part? So I went for the audition. And it's always the way when you don't really want something and yeah, you, you're cool so about it, you often get it. And I, and I got yeah. the part of Lindsay Corkill. But wow. I'd accepted a six-month job on a cruise ship. No. And I had to choose between the two. So I did one episode in Brookside and I chose the cruise ships. God, I bet that was a great experience, though. Yeah, travelling around the world, though. Well, Hayley, I did that for four years on the cruises. And then I wrote to Mal Young, who was the producer of Brookside, I said, any chance of Lindsay Corkill coming back? And the day he got the letter was the day they were moving Jimmy and Jackie into the close. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That is And fate. in a future storyline meeting, so I got brought in. It's just good timing. <sighs> Talk about timing and meant to be. I know. That's what I love about I things know. that happen like that. Yes. Well, we're going to go uh, into your next song uh, choice. A bit of street life. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Why this one? This song is for DJ Fat Tony, right? Yes. Sweetest Combination is one of my favourite albums, Randy Crawford. <laughs> And Tony's anthem when he when he does his sets is Street Life. He plays the most oh. brilliant version of Street Life. And I've loved that song forever and I just think of uh, uh Fat Tony now when I hear this song. It's just it's just everyone gets up and dances. Oh, what a tune. Well this one Fat Tony is for you. <laughs> Now, Claire, I want to talk about some of your West End roles. I mean, I saw you in Roxy in Chicago. Uh, there's been oh. so many Legally Blonde, uh, Hairspray, but the best one, opposite Patrick Swayze in Guys mm. and Dolls. How did that come about? Because that is just incredible, Claire. Well, I was doing a show called 60 Minute Makeover. Oh, and I love I was, that. Well, I was getting bored, Hayley. I was running oh, out of things. Oh. Yeah, I'd run out of things to say about red paint. I was like, oh. <laughs> Another feature wall, here we go, you know. <laughs> I remember I was just getting fed up and I wanted to sing and dance and do shows. And I got asked to audition for Guys and Dolls and Ewan McGregor was in it at the time. 
and um, he was leaving and, and so Neil Morris who was taken over and it's to play Miss Adelaide opposite him which is a wonderful female comic role, wonderful part yeah. and I auditioned for it and I didn't get it and I was oh. absolutely gutted. Went back to 60 Minute Makeover and then my agent said and um, they've come back now six months later and they want you to play the part um, and you're going to be starring opposite Patrick Swayze. Wow. And so it, it meant me giving up 60 Minute Makeover. And my yeah, agent... Yeah, I mean, went, come yeah, on, Patrick Swayze. It. I say Patrick Swayze no or brainer. a paintbrush, no brain brush, you know <laughs> what I mean, yeah? So I chose Guys and Dolls, obviously. And it was one of the happiest jobs I've ever done in my life. And it was just was a great it? part, working with Michael Grandage, um, Patrick, and just brilliant, brilliant. Jamie, Jamie Lloyd, wonderful people, brilliant people, so... Did yeah, you get to it. kiss Patrick Swayze every yeah, night? Yeah, I stuck the tongue in, yeah, every oh, night. Oh, go on, Claire, <laughs> love it. <laughs> that one for the team. <laughs> yeah! Oh, wow, yeah. what an absolute dream come true. I know, he was lovely. That really is. He was every bit as nice inside as he was outside, yeah. Yeah, he seems he's it. Really but kind. it's always nice when you meet your idols and you go, oh, gosh, they are really nice. Yeah, no, he's really, really kind, really lovely. Oh, I love that. And is there a role in the West End that you'd love to do that you haven't done yet? So there's two roles that I want to play. I would love to play Mrs Hannigan in Annie. Oh, yes. Yeah, that'd be good fun. And It's a classic. Yeah, and, and, and like a childhood dream of mine was always to play Mrs Johnson in Blood Brothers. Oh, that gets me every time, Blood Brothers, honestly, at the end. Yeah. I'm always walking out in tears. I know, I know. I'd love to, yeah. I'd love to play that part. Yeah. Well, uh, watch this space. We want to see you with Mrs. Halligan, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so we're gonna... An alcoholic cougar. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go into your next song. Uh, Tony Bennett with Katie Lang, uh, Blue Velvet. Uh, beautiful song. Why this one, Claire? Well, I'm a big fan of Katie Lang and Tony Bennett. And then they did this album together. I used to have a house in Spain. I used to play it on loop all the time, all the time. And I remember going to see Tony Bennett at the Royal Albert Hall God. and the next morning I used to go to the Dorchester gym and I'm in the gym oh. and Tony Bennett walked in wow. with this tall beautiful blonde German girl and he gets on the he's on the walking machine and she's getting him to go faster and faster I remember he, I was thinking the poor guy he's done a show last night he should be getting his feet rubbed and having a bacon butty in bed you know what I mean <laughs> I was going to see him that night and as he was leaving, there was just like me, him and her in the gym. So I said to him, Mr. Bennett, I'm a big fan. I said, my favourite album is your album with KD yeah. Lang. And he stood and chatted to me for about 20 minutes Did about he? him oh, and KD. Yeah, yeah. Oh God, he was wonderful oh, uh, yeah. about him and KD Lang. And it was like he shed 20 years just talking about music and about wow. her. And, so I went to see him that night and I was like, he's my mate. We he's your mate now. Like yeah, <laughs> love that. Who knows that you meet in the gym? Love it. I know, I know. Isn't that lovely? Yeah. Oh, that really is. We're going to play out the song now for you, Claire, and we'll see you after. She wore blue velvet. We've got a quick fire question round for you, Claire Sweeney. Are you ready? Yeah. Woo! Okay, first song that you ever purchased. B.A. Robinson, To Be or Not To Be. Um, hey. Two together, that and the Nolan Sisters, Let's Make Love. Oh. <laughs> uh, dance floor song. What is that song that you hear and Claire Sweeney is straight on that dance floor? Somebody else's guy, Jocelyn Brown. Yeah, Jean. A uh, taxi song. Is there a song where you get in a taxi at the end of the night and you're like, I need this song in my life right now? Oh, anything George Benson. Yeah, yeah. It's got to be done. A karaoke yeah. song. Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> what a change. I know, I know, it's ambitious, isn't it? I do all the different voices as well. Do yeah. you? Yeah, yes, yeah, oh. and party piece. <laughs> I love that. And a driving song. Is there a tune you put on driving down the motorway full blast? Yes, there is a song that's always quite poignant to me. I love Christmas, and it's whenever that song comes on when I'm driving. I'm always driving up to Liverpool to see my mum and that when I'm driving home for Christmas. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's that song. It's got to be yeah, done. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Yeah. Tune. And that motivational song, is there something that you put on and just go, yeah, I'm taking on the world, bring it on? Oh, my God. That's, I don't know. Um, it could be a show tune. It could be like, a, I'd be actually yeah. listening to a lot of Hamilton. 
Hamilton, the album. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's such a good musical, I listened to that a lot during lockdown. Now, I've been totally demotivated with exercise. I've got a Peloton there with clothes hanging oh. on it next to my bed. <laughs> um, and then the only thing that will get me on it to do a workout is they do a Hamilton workout, and that gets me going. Do they? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know they did that. Yeah. I need this in my life. Yeah, yeah. Well, because I am that person that when I'm on the treadmill, I'm literally playing Wicked or Legally Blonde. Yeah. And I think if oh, anyone could actually hear this, they probably wouldn't be quite snap. horrified. So that sounds yeah. perfect. <laughs> yeah. Amazing <laughs> stuff. Well, your next song, uh, the totally opposite, uh, Bob Marley, uh, Turn Your Lights Down Low. Why this one? Oh, I love I love this song. Um, and, and for years and years, I've always thought it was called I Wanna Give You Some Good, Good Loving. I didn't realise it was called Turn Your Lights Down Low. Oh. Um, I just love Exodus. It's a, just a brilliant album, one of my favourite albums, um, which I listen to regularly. Um, and I just think this song is the most beautiful, beautiful song on the album. Yeah, it is beautiful. We're going to play it out right on the show now for you. Turn your lights down low. Well, Claire, I know you've got a lot of exciting things coming up. You're doing panto. Where are I'm you doing this panto. year? panto. So the, the good thing is, right, with lockdown again, all as I wanted to do was be in my family. Um, I got used to not working, which was nice, because I've been a workaholic yeah. since the age of 14. So it was lovely to just hang out with my son. So I got offered Panto. I started rehearsals for Panto last year and it got pulled because of the tier system. Oh, yeah. uh, Milton Keynes went into the wrong tier. This year I got offered Southport, which means I can be near my mum in Liverpool. Oh, how lovely. Jackson can yeah. be near all of his family. Uh, a friend of mine's producing it. It's, it'll pay me tax bill in January, which is very nice. Thank you very much. And, uh, and, and after the first time, okay, so whenever I get to Panto, I always say the three ages of Panto, you start off as the young principal girl or principal boy in my day. Then you become the older glamorous evil queen, which is what I've always done. And then, you know, you really get an old when you get offered Fairy Godmother. <laughs> and that's what I'm, I'm, that's what I'm playing this year, Fairy it's Godmother. It's a classic role, though, Claire. Ah, yeah, right, oh, thank you. Oh, now, I'm looking forward to it. Well, so we'll get a bit of details on the screen, yeah, of how we can come and see you in Panto. And obviously, you've got yeah. your radio show as well, haven't you? Well, the funny thing is, Hayley, my radio show is quite similar to this show. I have a celebrity on and they choose six songs and ah. they, I talk about their lives and what their songs mean to them and why. Um, and it was, I, I did my first series in the height of lockdown and because it was lockdown, everyone was so happy to just talk to someone different and, yeah. you know, just kind of feel a bit alive again, talking about music. And I got great people. I was getting like, you know, Paul O'Grady, oh, Ollie Johnson, wow. um, Phil Redmond. I, and then I've just, I've just finished, well, I'm just about to finish series two and I'm doing John Bishop, John Culshaw and Carol McGiffin on my next few I'm back, tuning uh, into that show, one so. because I don't know about you, but yeah. I just love, I love talking. That's my favourite thing. And then my second favourite thing is music. So and it's a music, great combination, isn't it? It is, yeah, it is, it is. And it was funny me choosing these songs because I'm, I'm normally in your position asking the questions. So for me to sit and choose the songs, I was like, oh, gosh. It's quite yeah, tricky, isn't it, it, when you have to narrow it down? Because when someone asks you, you're like, oh, hang on a minute. But it's um, I love hearing people's stories, Claire. So um, I feel like it's yeah. the perfect thing to do. And speaking of which, your last song choice, A Wonderful World, uh, Louis Armstrong, why this one? It's, it's a classic song. And I always dreamed of having a baby. And when I used to have my house in Spain, I used to play it full blast in the garden when I was in the pool. Sounds a bit flash, doesn't it? But um, And then I remember when I had my son Jackson, I remember having this song blaring out and my little baby, tiny baby in the water with me. And Aww. just thinking, I have never felt so happy and fulfilled in my whole life and listening to this song. Aww. And it's funny, it was a song that was played at my friend's funeral. And it always felt like a sad song to me. And then when I had Jackson, it, it kind of spun it round for me and, and evoked happy happy thoughts and memories for me. Yeah, oh, wonderful. We're going to play that out on the show now. But Claire, thank you so much uh, for coming on today's show. We've absolutely loved it. Please keep up uh, the Instagrams uh, with uh, Fat Tony because we need yeah. that in our lives. We want more of those. In fact, twice a day would be great. Oh, God, no.
<laughs> you mentioned. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Hayley. I really enjoyed it. Oh, well, thank you so much. It's a real honour. Thank you. It's Claire Sweeney, everyone. Thank you. I see trees of green. Oh, huge thank you to the brilliant Claire Sweeney for being such a wonderful guest on tonight's show. And thank you to you at home for supporting the show. It really is very much appreciated. Thank you. Now, I will see you same time, same place next week. And we're going to leave you with Saturday Night Song of the Week. Hayley Palmer, it's Pete Connor here from D Ream. Thank you for all your support and for playing our new record, I Used to Believe in Love. Thank you. Enjoy. I used to believe in love. Later on.